So coming back again to tests of symmetry in a polar graph, um, we already said this, but I just wanted to refresh and make sure you understand. The graph of a polar equation is symmetric to symmetric with respect to the polar axis if it's cosine, and it's going to be symmetric with respect to the line theta is pi over two if it's a function of sine. Now remember, we're going to be using zero to pi for entering our table values for cosine, and then from negative pi over two to pi over two for sine of theta. So looking at this, we're going to use symmetry again, four plus three sine of theta, which in this case sine is going to be symmetric to the vertical uh, line through pi over two. So if I drew this line, it's going to be symmetric here. So if I can find all the points over here, it would flip them over, or if any points over here, it'd flip over that way as well. So let's go ahead and plug these points in here. So go ahead, I'm just going to write these down. So at negative pi over two, I get one. This is 1.4, this is 1.9, this is 2.5, this is 4, 5.5, 6.1, 6.6, and 7. It sounds like I'm scoring some sort of skating uh, competition. <laughs> kind of funny. Um, so in this case, again, remember, uh, this is sine, so we're going from negative pi over 2 up to pi over 2. Now what we have to do is just plot all of these points and then flip all of these points over this right there and then we could have our full graph. So going ahead and plotting the first one, so at negative pi over 2 which is downwards, which will go, let's go ahead and make sure our scale here is correct actually. So let's make this a 2, a 4, a 6, an 8, and the reason why is because I get up to 7 here, so let's go ahead and do that. So at negative pi over 2 is 1, so it's somewhere around here. At negative pi over 3 we get 1.4, so it's closer there. Now we got negative pi over 4, which is in the middle, which is essentially 2, which is more close to somewhere around here. And then at negative pi over 6, it's 2.5, which gets more out here. So I'm sorry if I'm not perfect here, but I'm getting pretty close. And then at 0, it's 4, so it gets about right here. And then at pi over 6, it gets out to 5.5, which is way out here. And then pi over 4, which is 6.1, which pretty close to that line. Pi over 3, which will be 6.6, .6, a little bit bigger. And then it gets all the way out to 7 here. So if I go ahead and just rough draw this, let's go ahead and use orange. Kind of goes like something like this. Like so. And now what we want to do is go ahead and draw the second part of it. So we're going to actually flip all of these points on the other side. So let's go ahead and do that in green. So this is maybe about right here. And then in the middle here, we go about right there. So then it goes, oh, i got to go in pi over 6, so 5 pi over so right around there. And then it gets to 4. And then these little points get a little bit trickier because they're super, super close. So we have this one's the same, but then it kind of goes out to about right there, and then again right there, and then there. So we kind of follow this graph around, and it kind of like loops back up like this. So it kind of loops into it, loops into it. It's kind of like a circle mostly, and then it just kind of has this little thing here. And that would be my final answer here which is actually a, a limason again. And specifically, it's actually a specific type of car, uh, a limason, which is called a cardioid. So if you really wanted to know, you don't really have to know this personally, but it's called a cardioid. So that would be a D there. So that would be the specific name of this type of limason. So we're going to go ahead and name or give you the types of different polar graphs. First off, we have circles, which have this general form. R is equal to a cosine of theta, or R is equal to a sine of theta. They generally look like circles, because they are circles. So let's go ahead and go look at the next ones. Which in this case is limassons, again, which you can have the big swirly-whirly one. You could have the one that we did before, a cardioid, and then you could have a dimpled limason, which it just has a little dimple, um, and then you have a convex one, which kind of looks kind of like a circle here. Um, these are kind of the general form equations with a and b here, so a is less than b, a is equal to b, a is between 2b and b, and a is bigger than or equal to 2b as well. So, And here's our your general form as well. So in this case, those are limassons. 
So these ones are roses. Like I said, they have different petals. So a rose has n petals if n is odd, and then two n petals if n is even. So if it has four petal, or if it has four for your n value, which is in front of the theta for these equations, it would have eight petals. But if it has five in front of this, you'd have five petals. So those would be roses. And the last two we're not going to deal too much with unless you're using your graphing calculator. Um, you're going to have this type here, which is lemniskites, lemniskites, and then the Archimedes or spirals of Archimedes here. And the names you can actually try to pronounce are right there. Um, and a spiral will look like this. Usually if you graph it, it'll basically stop usually on your calculator where you can't see it any further. So just to note that it'll probably stop here or here on your calculator if you try it. So we're going to go ahead and use our graphing calculator here to graph some of these uh, different types of graphs for polar equations. So the first thing you're going to have to do on your TI-84 is go to mode here. Then we're going to have to make sure we have it in polar. So we have to go down here and make sure it's in polar. Um, and you click over and that would be polar then if you click that POL is polar. Now depending on what you need you could have it in radians or degrees. We're going to keep it in radians for now because we have theta which will probably keep it in radians here. So let's go ahead then and exit out. So press second quit to exit out of here and then we can go to this y equals which then we're going to write in three cosine of theta which if we type that we're going to type three and then cosine and then theta will be up here in our variable button and then close the parenthesis and press enter. Now we're going to go ahead and graph that but before we do that we're going to press zoom and we're going to go to standard for our standard system so we're going to press six and then I'll put it on here but it's kind of a little skewed because it's not very square so we're going to go back to that and then go down to square so we'll click number five and you can see the graph here. It's pretty small, so we're going to go ahead and zoom back in. So go ahead and go to zoom and go down to number two and press enter. And then we're going to move our cursor maybe to the middle of this graph here somewhere. So you have that cursor there and press enter so it'll zoom in. Now you can see that it's a circle here and that would be your polar graph. So that's how you use a calculator to do it. Now let's go ahead and do another example here. So let's go ahead and do two cosine of three theta. So let's see what that is. So in this case, go back to y equals, and we're gonna press two, and then we're gonna type cosine, and then we're gonna do three theta. So we'll click the theta sign, and then close the parenthesis, press enter, and we're gonna go ahead and graph it again, but I'm gonna go ahead and zoom, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and do square, which is five, um, and it looks like this. And now I can go ahead and move it over if I wanted to or not. So you can always go back to your standard setting, which is six, and then you could actually go back again and make it square again. So you can kind of manipulate it how you want. Obviously, you'd wanna zoom back in here, um, you could play with the window if you want to do it yourself, but I just like using the zoom feature. It's already done for you essentially, and we just have to like zoom in or zoom out and move it around. So now you can see this is a rose with three petals. That should make sense um, because this three here will be have three petals. Um, if it was a five, it'd have five petals, and if it was a four, it would have eight petals, if you recall. Um, so that's how you'd use a graphing calculator to find it. So you can do some other things like trace it and follow around the points. So if you press trace, you can actually move ar around the curve and see where specific points are if you want. And there's some other stuff you can do as well. Uh, we're not going to get too much into that. So let's go ahead and do our last example um, using a graphing calculator, which is one plus sine of theta. So let's look here. We're going to go back to y equals, and we're going to type 1 plus, so why didn't it press 1 here? So 1 plus, and then sine of theta, and we'll press enter here. And we're going to go ahead and just craft it and see if it fits on our thing. And in this case here, we have this limason uh, right here. So it, it kind of goes like, and then back down here. And that's the graph of 1 plus sine. And that's how you'd use your graphing calculator to graph these. Remember, you'd have to go to mode, and you'd have to make sure it's in polar, and most likely it's in radians, so I would always have it in radians for these ones. Um, and then go to your y equals and enter that in, and then use your zoom feature quite a bit. You want to make it as a square, otherwise it'll be kind of 
unsquare and it won't look as good. So there's that.